Nobody knew that. Nobody. A woman startled by secrets revealed through her deceased brother. Plus, this is actually my last hope. A mother takes desperate steps to save her out of control daughter. And, and he'll never share those things with our daughter. This is the site of an unsolved triple murder. James goes on location to try and heat up a cold case and bring relief to the shattered families. Today, on Beyond. Using his extraordinary psychic ability to communicate with spirits, he's transformed lives by unlocking mysteries and sharing secrets from the other side. James Van Prague, best-selling author, renowned medium, and your connection to the world beyond. I'd like to begin over here, if I might, please. Would you mind standing? There's a man standing behind you. And um, I feel it's a father figure that's next to you, okay? But he's coming in very, very strong. And as I'm walking down here, he said, would you please come to me, please come to me. So I want to come to you, okay? okay? Do you have a house near a beach? Yes. I feel as though from spirit, he was influential with it, getting you get that house. Mm -hmm. And he's saying to me that you didn't, <laughs> you were very shocked or surprised when you got this house or something and how you got the house. Right. I know mother's worried about breast cancer. Yes. She's but curious. he wants me, and her mother's passed over also. Is she because there? he's telling me, uh, mother, your mother's here. Her mother's here. Your grandmother's right here, Good. and she's right with you. And unbelievable, this lady is larger than life. She's huge. Yeah, she is, <laughs> and um, <laughs> larger than life. And she keeps on saying, I haven't stopped giving giving to you from Good. here, because she makes things for you all the time, like grandmothers would do. But she was kind of like she stepped in when your dad was not there. Yes. You understand that she was like the surrogate uh, daddy. And she taught you many, many things. She taught you at home, she's telling me, mm -hmm. with books and started to read with you. She taught yes. you about reading. Right. Right? Yeah, she taught and me. And I gotta tell you, there are two children. Not sure if you have them yet or not. Yes, I do. Thank you. Yeah. It's hard for me to tell people that, and they, oh God, really have kids, so. <laughs> but she wants me to tell you that they're being watched over by her. Excellent. And you wanted that, you asked her to watch over them. And one of the deliveries was very difficult. Yes. I understand that. Yes. And she said, I was there for you. Don't worry. I was there. You weren't going to go anywhere. <laughs> you weren't going to go anywhere. Um, there's also, um, I'm interesting, boats with you or a boat. Uh -huh. And she loves that you go in the boat. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Okay. Um, you are never alone. Good. You're never alone. And your kids are blessed. And you are also blessed. Okay? So I'll leave you with that. Thank okay? you. God Thank bless. Thank you very much. I want to come to this, uh, these people here, this lady, and this, yeah, and this man. Are you all one family? Because there's a man standing here. Did you lose your husband? There's a man here standing here, very connected to you. I'm not sure who this is. I'm not sure if it's a brother of yours, a past? Yes, yes. could be. OK. You didn't expect to hear from me, he said. You're didn't right. You're right. <laughs> you are right. <laughs> didn't expect to hear from me. Um, but he's here. He's here. I also feel a heart condition very strong. So I don't know who passed over the heart attack. Cancer. Who, your brother? Yes. Was it in the chest area? Yes. Okay, sorry, I thought it was hard. Was it right in the lungs? Yes. Miserable, he said. He said, I was miserable. I was the worst patient ever. And he goes, I just wanted to die and get it over with. And I wanted nothing about, nothing about it. He didn't like people washing him. Mm -hmm. And um, you know he hated that, right? Okay. Yes. Um, do you like to read mystery novels? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about you putting a book down, and he said she has a whole bunch of them at home. And he said you don't finish them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I will read all but the last page. <laughs> okay, because you don't finish them, he said, okay? I'm gonna tell you this problem with a kidney here. He's referring to trouble with a kidney. I'm coming to you with that, okay? Because you need to have kidneys looked at. There's trouble with one of the kidneys. They don't feel like one is not working as well as the other one. Nothing to really worry about at all. It's so weird, hold on. He's talking to me about something here with you too, though. Her husband. Thank you. You're welcome. Your husband passed over? Okay. There's the man with you. All right. And he has the heart. And he had the heart condition. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird because I know what I'm getting and then it doesn't make sense. And I'm like, well, why am I picking up that? Or they're giving me that and it doesn't make sense. So the heart condition is you and your husband. And that's who you came to talk to today. Okay. Mom, I want to thank you for bringing her here. Thank you. Because he's thanking you for bringing her here. 
and he said, she didn't want to come, and you pushed her to come here. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense, huh? Very much so this morning. Yes, yeah, very much so. <laughs> because you were afraid of coming, he's telling me here. And he's, he said, I don't understand that. You know, she's afraid of me? I, I lived with her. I loved her. Why would she be afraid of me? All right, I'll leave you with that. God bless Thank you all. You so much. Okay. This lady is larger than life. Describe her to us. Larger than life. Total matriarch of the family. My mother was widowed with five children, and she stepped in and helped raise us and, uh, you know, definitely laid the foundation for all our traditions. I know mother's worried about breast cancer. My mother had a bout with breast cancer a couple years back, and it seems like everyone was up there helping her through it and, and being there, being supportive for her. So that was really nice to hear. Very touching. And one of the deliveries was very difficult. My oldest was a cesarean. She was breech, and during the delivery, I felt like I was suffocating, like I couldn't breathe. I was completely shocked that he came straight to me right away. And when he said they were standing next to me, it was just wonderful to feel that energy next to me. Now, does a brother of yours have passed? Your brother dominated the reading. Yes, he did. I was so surprised that he came through because he was the last to pass. And I never expected him. Do you feel like you left some things unresolved when he died? I never got to talk to him before he died. and. It, we only knew a short period of time that he had cancer, mm -hmm. just a couple of months. And um, so, yes, I do feel like you need to talk. Do you like to read mystery novels? Nobody knew about the mysteries and that I never finished them. <laughs> <laughs> I, nobody knew that. Nobody. I will now talk to, to my brother more. You know, I usually talk to my mother or grandmother, but I'll talk to Billy now. Still to come. A father's sudden death forces a mom to take desperate measures to save her out-of-control teenage daughter. And... Oh, my God! They're all dead, he thinks. There's three of them. Three families need answers to a gruesome triple homicide. He was my son, but he was also my, my good friend. Next, on Beyond. Recently, I was called to New Mexico to help out with a triple homicide that still remains unsolved. There, I met three families who each lost a son. Here's what happened. It was um, probably the most devastating thing that I'd ever seen in my life, without a doubt. Oh, my God. They're all dead, he thinks. There's three of them. In the order or in a continuum of crime scenes, this ranks up with some of the worst. On May 29th, my wife and I were sitting in the house watching TV, and we heard gunshots. I ran down to the victim's car and looked inside to see three boys had been murdered. Three young men were, were subsequently identified as Kevin Shirley, the driver, Matthew Hunt, who was sitting in the passenger seat, and then Luis Garcia. We actually saw Kevin's car on, on TV, so we knew he was involved in something. We didn't know exactly what it was. Uh, the sheriff's four cars drove up um, and got out of the car and informed me that um, my son had been murdered. I fell to my knees. I couldn't believe it. Five months before uh, Matthew was murdered, he was in a rollover accident where he was paralyzed from the waist down. I've never seen anybody that had more courage during his rehab. He was a real inspiration to all of us. Kevin was your typical teenager. He lived for the good times. I mean, he was a guy who lived in the moment. Luis was a very sensitive boy, caring. He cared about everybody. He was my son, but he was also my, my good friend. You cry. Um, when you're done crying, you, uh, you feel a little bit better, but you're not any less sad. We just had a brand new grandchild, and he was supposed to be an uncle. And he'll never share those things with our daughter. We'll never see his children. Someone thought they had the right to take his life. You cannot do something like this and not pay some consequences for it. Having no answers for the family members of Matt and Kevin and Luis uh, is the most difficult thing. All of us, including the detectives, are, are willing to take any help we can get from anybody. We need to know why our boy, our son was taken from us. We really do. We need to know why. 
I don't know a lot about the phenomena of psychics. Uh, I don't understand it that well, but just because I don't understand things doesn't, doesn't mean that I don't have an open mind and a willingness to hear the ideas of other people. I hope James uh, provides that key piece of information that uh, we need to be able to go forward. I'm very interested to hear what Mr. Van Prog might have to say today. There, there were three boys, yes? Three boys? That's correct. And they were coming from some particular place? That's correct. They had, uh, uh, as far as we could tell, had uh, left a, uh, a gathering um, east of here. I got to tell you, I feel like there's some connection to this gathering or this party. I don't know if one of the people knew them, but I feel these people were older that did this, and I think one of them lives in this area, not too far away. I think one does not, but one lives very close to this area. And I really have a sense that um, one of them has black, dark black hair. I see a facial hair goatee. And, um, and I also feel somebody with a football jersey. Is there a, a mechanic shop around here, a car mechanic shop close by? Because I have a feeling that this car that was involved went to the mechanic shop. I would say the closest mechanical shop, a car mechanic shop, I would look. And that week, okay. I would check that out. I think that the car was an American SUV car. I really do. I feel like it was either Ford or it was um, GMC. I think that the car stayed here for a while, and I think there was a threat, and they were yelling back and forth. I feel there was yelling, like, um, oh yeah, sure, you know, this sort of a thing. Kind of just an exchange. An exchange, yep, definitely an exchange. Just to make sure I understand what you're saying, you're saying the vehicle was parked here prior to the event? Correct. Or, or afterwards? No, I think they were waiting here. Oh, okay. I, I, want, I want to say how close the range of the shooting was, because I feel like there could have been someone walking up to the car. My experience with James was a very interesting one. Uh, certainly uh, a very thought-provoking uh, experience. On at least two occasions, uh, James brought up a, a couple of things that, that uh, would be considered accurate relating to facts that, that I don't believe has been released to the public yet. We certainly want to look at what he had to tell me against the existing information in the case. I would very much like James to be able to connect with our son, Matthew. I want to hear from Luis, if he could tell us what happened that night. I have to say that I am skeptical about what's going to happen, and so I'm, I'm just willing to see what'll happen. Well, I want to thank you all for inviting me here today. Now, I've never met you, right? I've never been here before. I know you're, you've had a um, tragedy that every one of you lost a son through a gunshot. Um, we're going to be joined in the reading with Kirsten and Karen, Kevin's two sisters. I hope that we can help you, okay? All right, hold on, hold on. Now, I'm gonna ask you, I know there's three boys here, but there's also more people here. Tomorrow, part two. He's showing me a heart, which is hanging in your house. Oh my gosh. Did you pick his favorite songs? And you wanted to make sure that they were played at his funeral. Yeah. I don't know if there's someone named Raymond or Ray. One of my daughters had a dream. Somebody named Raymond Ray is the one who did it. That's tomorrow on Beyond. A teenage girl, drinking, using drugs, having sex with men twice her age. Her mother's last hope to save her is next on Beyond. The tragic death of her father has sent our next guest out of control, and her mother is desperate for help. I have to stress the piece you're about to see was taped before the show. No one in our studio, including James, has seen it. Here's the story of KC and Kathleen. I'm hoping to make contact with my husband who died four years ago on my daughter's birthday while he was baking her birthday cake. Since my husband passed, my daughter's behavior has been um, very challenging. She's um, acted out in a lot of different ways. Sexually active immediately after he died, not very that void of the man and then drinking was a big self-medication problem and just not caring anymore. Just all, all hope and all faith had been lost. The hardest part not having my husband. Support. Being there for my kids and you know when things are tough knowing that you have somebody help see you your way through it. This is actually my last hope. I know you lost your husband and that's your dad and you've had a hard time. So hopefully we can make contact with him today. I can't promise anything, but 
What do we can do and maybe make things a little better for you? You're a really good person. You really are a good person and you don't see yourself that way. And you really need to because you have such a bright light. Um, your husband is strong, strong, strong. He's right here and he wants me to tell you something. He's sorry he had to go. And he said, please don't blame me for going. Because he said, my daughter gets angry with me because I left. And you scream at him, why did you go? GD, why did you go? And that's because that's you know what? He's telling me that it was God's plan he had to go. It was God's plan, all right? And he knows it's hard for you to understand right now. But he keeps on saying in my ear here, I'm her guardian angel. I'm her guardian angel. I'm her guardian angel. He worries about you a lot. There's a new kid or new, two new guys around that you've seen just recently. Yeah. Well, I don't like them. Sorry. <laughs> Find someone new. I don't you. like him either. No, and I, one of them just got a car. Yeah. Okay, because I don't like the guy that got the car just now. And um, he's telling me that. Don't like him. And you need to stick away from those people. They're bad luck. And I don't, did you go fishing? Did you ever go did, fishing yeah, with Daddy? In Lake Tahoe. Because yeah, yeah. he loves going fishing with you. Yeah. And he said, would you please remember him when you used to go fishing with him? That memory that you guys shared. Just yeah. you two. Just you guys. And went there. Went was he buried, by the way? Was yeah, he, he was in the coffin? In, yes, he was. Because he talks about you putting things in the coffin. Yes, yeah. we did. He talks about that. Skis. He wasn't going to skis. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All right. Yeah. Good. Skis. And the, and the golf ball. And yeah, golf and stuff in there. Letters, and you put, yeah. I know there were other things in the pictures, too, I was seeing. Lots I need to put a flower in there for him. And letters and, and you golf balls and yeah. At home. I keep he's cheap. show me a hat. Cap or hat? He's going to show me here. His red hat. His red hat that had the reindeer that were. Yeah. And you put that in there yes. too. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's so cool. Yeah. That's that cool? so cool. Yeah. That's what he's talking about. That was a big deal to him. He doesn't want you to go on the trip coming up. There's going to be a trip coming up. We're going to Massachusetts next Tuesday. We're supposed to go back to see family. Okay. His. Okay. That's fine, but this is not the trip he's talking about. He's going to be a trip separate to you. Friday. Okay. I didn't know that. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, <funny. laughs> it's funny what you find out. Okay. Um, you are so connected to your father. You are so connected. I mean, it's like, hello, we're the same people almost. Mm -hmm. And he's telling me that he's with you at night, and like you'll be in your, on your computer, mm -hmm. and you'll be sitting there, and you'll think of him, mm -hmm. and you'll get this inspiration from him. Mm -hmm. Inspiration means in spirit, OK? He is impressing you, inspiring you. And you're also very gifted in writing. So I want you to continue with that creative writing, because it's really good. And your father's going to give you stories from heaven. I mean, he's going to give you the best that there is. So please know that, all right? All right. I'll leave you with that. Thank okay. You very much. All right. Thank Good you. luck. Keep showing me a hat, a cap or hat. Nobody knew about that. Those are things that I did at the end after everybody walked away. There's a new kid or new two new guys around that you've seen. When he mentioned the two guys that I shouldn't, chills were going down up and down my spine because it's like I ha I've been trying to detach myself from them slowly but surely, but it's a lot harder for me to detach when I'm that type of person that wants to have the male role model around me anyways. And you're also very gifted in writing. I wrote a eulogy for his funeral, and I read it, and it was like, I was only 12, and I only wrote it like within two days, and everyone loved it. This so. seems as though it's been a really long road for long, you. Yeah. Do you feel you will change you? It'll take you in I, another I, place? I, I, I honestly, I felt I've already had this change since I, 30 days ago, and slowly but surely, this is just even more of a motivation and more of a drive to change. Oh, oh gosh, <laughs> oh my goodness. If you'd like to be part of the Beyond Show audience and have a chance for a reading with James, call our toll-free number, 1-866-88-JAMES, or go to our website at thebeyondshow.com. You know, James, uh, the reading you did with Casey and Kathleen, mm, yeah. Kathleen really, really needed for her dad to come through. She did. And you had so much to say about her dad. Mm -hmm. And I know they were blown away. I was blown away, too. Yeah, the father came through very, very strongly. And I think he needed to come through. You know, there was a strong need and desire for him to come through to let him know that he was around her. He's protecting her. And I know a lot of people, they watch the show and they wonder how in the world you do a lot of that stuff just like me. And then you say something so specific and they tell me backstage, nobody knew about that. It's just not something they ever talked about. No. And you say it and then you got to wonder how you do it. 
I you talk know. to dead people. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, anyway, yeah. we're going to keep up with Kathleen and see how she's doing. Good. You'd like to see what happens with her. We'll do an update with her because um, she's a good person, you know, and she has a lot to offer herself and her family and her friends, and she's a leader in many ways. She's a strong girl. Yeah. yeah. So all of you out there, I leave you with this. Forget what you know and believe what you see. We'll see you next time. Thank you. And is there a Sylvia at all in relation to you? Sylvia, I know a Sylvia, or I did know a Sylvia who was a patient of mine and... She's passed over though, hasn't she? I heard she passed over. Well, she wants to thank you for taking care of her. Oh. And you have two grandmothers passed over because one's here and one's there, one's your father's side, one's on your uh, mother's side of the family. Yes. And one of them is talking about giving you toys. Yes. Toys, and that, she would be known